whoa, dude, like 24 hours is crazy, but... My name is Leah Yu. I am back at it again with another foundation review. And today I brought this Etude House Double Lasting Foundation. I don't know why I did that, but let's begin! So first off, an interesting fact about this foundation is that this foundation is only online exclusive at the moment, so you can't find it in stores. I don't know why though, because I feel like foundation is something that you need to like swatch and like test it out physically. Price tag, it was 18,000 Korean won, which is approximately about 18 US dollars or 16 US dollars at the moment. It's a very affordable foundation. I don't know about you guys but I did sense from the name like the double lasting it kind of seemed like it's targeting to be a dupe for Estee Lauder double wear foundation. However I find the texture and the finish is like way different from the double wear foundation. It's actually way smoother and it actually is a little bit more dewier. I generally have a really really bad reaction with Etude House face products like Etude House skincare and also Etude house foundations cushion and BB creams like my skin doesn't like it so I was very very scared and skeptical to try this foundation but luckily I haven't been breaking out or I didn't really get any irritation um, from this foundation so I guess that's the good news it does have a strong floral scent to it so if you're kind of like sensitive towards artificial scent you might want to avoid this foundation it's a long-lasting foundation and it even has like 24 hours longevity test like clinically proven um, certified test or whatever like they have it on their website and I'm like whoa dude like 24 hours is crazy but I guess it's always good to have a foundation that has a long staying power from the product description they have like two major points that they want to claim the first one is mag magnet fit effect so I guess they're trying to say it sits well on the skin without caking up blending process and the application was very very pleasant and also it was just really easier than any other foundation that I've tried in the past. You really don't need to try hard with this foundation. It will blend and it will just sit there quite perfectly. But with second layer and third layer, like if you layer it up, it will kind of get cakey towards the end of the day or throughout the day. So be aware of that. The second marketing claim that they have is a double shot technology. I'm very vague about that term, but I guess what they're trying to say was this foundation is highly pigmented. It's the most pigmented foundation out of their entire Etude House foundation and BB cream range. With the littlest amount, it can actually cover the entire face with high coverage, like full coverage. I barely agree with a lot of marketing gimmicks or claims or the product description on a foundation but I guess those two I have to give it to Etude House. You did it well. Double Lasting Foundation offers five different shades and I was like so excited about it when I first found out like they finally have a Korean brand who respects like diversity in terms of skin tone but when I was like reading the description on the website of this shade I was so bummed. This is the shade Tan which happens to be the darkest which happens to suit my skin tone very perfectly and I have like NC25 and also I wear number 23 in Korean foundation so I guess it didn't really go darker it just like carried diverse um, hues I guess like rose tone and also beige tone okay back to work the coverage is mind-blowing it's amazing it's really impressive I did read a couple of reviews that the coverage didn't really um, live up to their expectation but to me are you seeing this face like I have a lot of spots underneath today do you spot any blemishes or any imperfections a lot of foundations that's coming out lately or recently like they have a specific trend like they always go for that highly pigmented formula which means it provides like high coverage full coverage with a very lightweight consistency with a light formula so i guess that house was kind of following with that trend moving on to texture and finish the texture itself is very lightweight and it's very fluid it 
kind of runs down when you squirt it out on your hand so you have to be careful with it. Although the consistency and the texture is super lightweight and super fluid and all that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look natural on your face. Like I can definitely see that I'm wearing a foundation, she's wearing a foundation. Yeah, if you're looking for a natural foundation, I think MAC Water Weight Foundation is awesome, Too Faced Born This Way Foundation is awesome, um, Lancome Tight Miracle Foundation is awesome, but this is more kind of done looking foundation. However, I adore and adore and adore the finish. It leaves a semi-matte finish with a beautiful, a gorgeous, healthy glow on the top of your skin. It naturally reflects the light, but not in a very overwhelming or overpowering way. It's in a very subtle and natural way. But I did kind of find this drying a little bit, so this is more catered for oily and combination skin types. If you do have dry skin types, then you might want to mix with a serum or your favorite cream in it or else you might want to skip this foundation. Another thing that I was super impressed by was that this foundation kind of fills the pores or kind of smooths out your entire skin texture. I noticed that because I was having skin rashes, like really bad reaction towards other products that I was testing out before. So my skin has been like really bumpy, but I think this kind of like evenly coated the entire bumpiness, I guess. It's definitely something that wouldn't accentuate your pores or any uneven skin texture. So kudos for that. <laughs> <laughs> for the staying power, you'll see it throughout the entire video because I did the whole longevity wear test. And without further ado, let's begin the demo. I'm going to use two different tools for each side of my face. I'm going to use a kabuki brush um, from Sigma Round Kabuki F82. And I'm going to use the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge on the right side of my face. So apparently in the direction it says like shake well before you use it, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to squirt out one single pump and as you can see, it's quite runny. I'm going to generously tap it. Product applies very seamlessly. I'm barely putting effort on to blending, but it just blends really effortlessly. So also, I feel like a little goes a long way, so you don't really need a lot of product. So far, this is one single layer. As you can see, kind of corrected my whole complexion, evened it out. I'm so glad I picked out this color because I was kind of gravitating towards sand and this color, tan, but it actually matches my skin tone very perfectly. So it feels very lightweight so far. It doesn't really kind of feel heavy at all. No, not really. But as you can see, there's still like little spots peeking through. So let's see if I can conceal that. Oh my god. I don't think you need a concealer with this foundation. It's very high coverage and also you can just target the area that you might feel like needs more coverage. Oh my goodness gracious, the coverage is flawless. So that is done on my left side. It's amazing so far. I'm really, really loving it, enjoying it. It just creates a flawless canvas and it doesn't really look like you're wearing a lot of foundation on because it's quite pigmented. So let's go ahead and apply the right side. In terms of application so far, I'm liking the Kabuki brush better. I can definitely see that sponge actually provides higher coverage and and it just applies the foundation way more opaque. Like I'm barely seeing any redness. Oh my god, it's like full coverage. I don't really see like healthy dewiness going on on my right cheek. Like it definitely feels more matte and more set. I don't think you need a concealer after this. Wow, so far so good. I don't know which side you guys prefer. This side is way more pigmented. It's more opaque. Like if you can compare my under eye circles, um, this side is like completely like insanely covered. If you are going for a photo shoot or if you need more HD appropriate high coverage. If you're going for a night out like clubbing, I guess like this side is more suitable for that those kind of occasions. But on a daily basis, I think I will wear um, this foundation with a kabuki brush. This side is like so natural and it just looks like you have a really really good skin. It is 10 a.m. at the moment so I will check back in a few hours. 
Bye! It's the time now. It is almost heading to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. I barely touched my face. I kind of blotted a little bit because my oil was kind of like getting out of control <laughs> because I have an oily skin. Um, other than that, I didn't do any touch-ups. I didn't set it with the powder. I kind of blowed my nose a lot. That's why my nose area is kind of like getting red because I caught a cold. But considering the fact that I've been blowing my nose, it didn't really like wear off that much or as much as I expected so it's pretty decent didn't really crack around anywhere to be honest it didn't really settle into my pores or fine lines at all so that's really really impressive the only con or the major con has to be the color this is the foundation that will definitely oxidize throughout the day the color is transforming into more ashy kind of yellowy undertones so it's not the prettiest if you see me in real life like you'll definitely notice that I look kind of tired because of the color tone kind of changed or oxidized. I'll check in later probably by the end of the day and I will see you guys soon. Bye! 9 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean in the evenings. It doesn't really look that different from when I checked back like a few hours ago. The coverage itself, it hasn't really rubbed off or wear off at all. Like my acne scars are still concealed. Not perfectly or not as opaque as it was but still like it did a pretty amazing job on concealing. It kind of started clinging around my nose and also accentuating the pores around that area that's about it if it didn't oxidize into this a little bit awkward ashy grayish kind of yellow color I would definitely give this like 10 out of 10 in terms of the longevity so that was it for today's review on the Etude House double lasting foundation if you have tried it please let me know in the comment box below share your opinion share your experience with this foundation and also share your skin type it will help a lot of people out there as well and uh, don't forget to subscribe because it's free and it just helps me a lot I guess and I'll see you guys next time bye